Find rest as you listen to this peaceful bedtime story. For more Bible stories that bring you refreshing sleep, download the Abide app in the iTunes or Google Play Store. Welcome to this relaxing Abide Bible bedtime story. Rest for the weary. This Christian meditation is here to help you with any sleep or insomnia difficulties you may have tonight. No matter where you are, you are safe now in the loving arms of God. Are you weary, exhausted, stressed, bone tired? Do you feel drained, like you're running on fumes on the edge of burnout? Jesus invites you to come. Come, take his light yoke of believing in him. Seek quiet in your heart so that you can listen to Jesus' invitation to lay all your heavy burdens at his feet to find rest. In Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, Jesus says, Come to me. It's here that Jesus invites you to lay all your heavy burdens at his feet and to find rest. Do you have anything weighing on you now? He is here with you now. Jesus promises to help, and you can trust in him. Before our journey begins, let your body relax. Close your eyes. Allow your head to rest deeply into your pillow. Breathe in the peace of God. As you prepare for sleep, know that the Lord is watching over you. He knows the weight you've carried today. Allow yourself to drift into the comfort of God's heavenly realm. If you fall asleep before I finish, that's good news. The meditation will turn off by itself when it's over. In Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, Jesus said, Come to me. Take that first step towards Jesus. His arms are wide open. He says, Come to me. Jesus is calling you. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Picture yourself stepping out from underneath the cloud of condemnation, negativity, and resting in the peace of Jesus. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Relax in the joy of falling into a deep sleep in the safety of Jesus. Feel the lightness of your load as you sink into the bed, the coolness of the sheets that form around your body. Allow your head to sink deeply into your pillow, holding the weight of your neck. Father, I praise, bless, and adore you for the promise of rest in the middle of chaos and the burdens of life. Lord, thank you for loving your children. Sometimes I take too much on myself. I now gladly lay down this heavy yoke I've been carrying, and I gladly cry, help. Grant me rest now as I embrace a refreshing, Time of sleep. You were faithful at spending time with your father, 
and you always accomplish his will. May it be the same for me. As you enjoy the comfort of your bed, know that this passage is one of the most precious in all of Scripture. It's only found in Matthew's Gospel. Jesus, who alone reveals the Father and the divine plan of redemption, calls out to you. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Jesus said, Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Can you see the rough wooden yoke normally joining two oxen together so they can share the workload evenly and become more productive? Again, Jesus invites you, come to me. Imagine yourself now being in the crowd when Yeshua speaks these words, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. The call of Jesus is to take up his yoke. It's an invitation to the true spiritual freedom of salvation that comes through him. See quiet in your heart so that you can listen to Jesus' invitation again to lay all your heavy burdens at his feet and to find rest. He carries the burden that you were meant to carry. Come, take his light yoke of believing in him. Seek quiet in your heart so that you can listen to Jesus' invitation to lay all your heavy burdens at his feet. Accept Jesus' invitation to rest in him taking your burdens one by one. Jesus offers this gift, a gift of release, the opportunity to let go of stresses and pressures. So exhale stress, inhale goodness. Whatever your burdens or struggles, allow Jesus to carry your troubles you are a child of God. Go to him. Do not be afraid. Jesus promises you rest. Jesus understood this need. He knew the importance of rest, time for replenishing his soul. Jesus said, Ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is talking about the yoke of obedience. A yoke is like a harness, like a yoke over the shoulders of an ox. But Jesus' yoke is not restrictive. It provides a useful structure. His yoke is easy. It's really a gift, a practice that harnesses for us a pathway to newness, aliveness. Learn from this gift. This way that I offer you, Jesus says, 
My burden is light. My burden is not heavy. Come to me, Jesus says, to my way, my practice. I will give you rest, rest for the soul. Believe, abide, and follow in his steps. That's the light yoke Jesus calls us to put on. It is the only yoke in existence that gives us rest for your soul. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Be with Jesus now and find rest for your soul. The God of the universe is watching over and protecting you. He loves you so much that he wants to be with you. He loves you so much, he wants to hear from you. 2,000 years ago, one of Jesus' disciples requested of him, Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus taught them the Lord's Prayer. He also told them, keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. In today's story, we'll take a trip back in time to the day of Jesus and learn about prayer from the master himself. The God of the universe wants to have a relationship with you. The God of the universe loves you. As you prepare to listen to this story, relax and enjoy these final moments of the day with your creator. Let your head sink slowly into your pillow, stretch out your arms, and then your legs. Feel the wonderful sensation of your muscles finally getting some downtime. If something isn't right around you during the story, then just hit the pause button on the app. You can easily come back at any moment. Finally, if you fall asleep during the story, then that's okay. In fact, that's great. The app will stop on its own. You're in the palm of God's hand. Before we start the story, let's pray. Father of heaven and earth, you are our creator and sustainer. Thank you for the gift of life and the gift of sleep. As the psalmist said, in peace, I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Father, I pray that this child of yours will sleep well tonight. I ask that you will grant them peaceful dreams of your kingdom. I ask that they will wake up refreshed and full of energy, ready to serve you another day. I ask that you will make your presence known to them in a mighty way. Help them to slow down, relax, and sense your protection and providential care. It's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. Let's journey back in time to the days of Christ. It's a time far removed from our technology-crazed world. It's a world where people ride horses and donkeys. It's a world where people often walk from place to place. It's a world where people grow their own food and draw their water from a well. 
It's a world without the distractions and the deadlines of the modern world. It's a world where people can easily enjoy God's creation and where neighbors always help one another in need. Today, you're enjoying a warm spring day while following Jesus and his disciples through the lush Judean countryside. Overhead, a few white, wispy clouds are sailing across the face of the sun, causing a series of shadows to crawl along the ground. The disciples also are looking upward. That cloud looks like a tree, Andrew says. No, it looks more like a lizard, his brother Peter says. That's a big difference, one of the disciples says. Everyone laughs. Jesus has led his followers to a field near a peaceful stream far away from the busy city of Jerusalem. A slight but steady breeze across the field to your left massages the skin on your arms and neck, ensuring you don't get too hot. The breeze carries a dozen fresh aromas with it, blue lupin and yellow daisies and white lilies. You take a deep breath <sighs> and enjoy the fragrances. The wildflowers cover much of the field, creating an explosion of colors only the master painter himself could make. The blue flowers are dancing ever so slowly, back and forth, with the yellow daisies and the white lilies in the breeze. The field's lush green grass frames the picture. You say a short, silent prayer. Thank you, God, for everything you've made. Jesus leads his followers along the stream, and you're enthralled by the many wonderful sounds, the water rushing over the smooth rocks, the birds chirping in the trees overhead, even a few toads croaking along the way. You marvel at the constant flow of water over the rocks, and you're reminded of what Jesus said one time about living water. Whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Every time you've been here at this stream, the water is always flowing. Every time you've been here, the creatures are drinking, whether deer or turtles or squirrels. It's as if God is always providing for them. It's as if God never forgets about them. God's love for his creation is evident everywhere you look. The water at this stream isn't like the muddy water of the Jordan River. It's as clear as a cloudless sky on a summer night with hundreds of flat, smooth stones reflecting the sunlight. The stones are mostly brown, with a swirl of multiple colors, including orange and red and blue. Out of the corner of your eye, you see movement in the water. It's a small fish, about half the size of your hand, and it's quickly making its way through the stream and over a dozen or so orangish-brown rocks. It's the roughest part of the stream for fish, and you silently cheer it on as it finally clears the last hurdle and speeds further down the stream. You hear a splash of water further upstream, but it's not a fish. No, the disciples are skipping rocks across the water, seeing whose rock will travel the furthest. The sounds of joy and laughter fill the air. About 10 minutes have passed. You have joined the others in skipping rocks across the stream. 
Peter and Andrew are having a playful, competitive game, as are James and John. You tell yourself, that's just like brothers. Jesus, though, has disappeared from the crowd. Others soon notice his absence, too. Where is he? Peter asks. You look around and scan the landscape. There he is, John says. Jesus is alone on the edge of the field, praying. He's maybe 50 long paces away, far enough where you can't hear him. Should we interrupt him? Someone says. No, leave him alone, Peter answers. You watch him in amazement. It's as if he's able to shut out the world and focus only on eternal things. Just a few minutes ago, he was skipping rocks with you, smiling and laughing. But now, he's alone in the field. It's as if he's in his own temple. He's standing upright, arms outstretched, with palms facing heavenward. His eyes are closed. His head is bowed. His back is to you. You've always been amazed by Jesus' passion for righteousness, his zeal for God, and his knowledge of Scripture. It's as if, well, it's as if he has memorized every single portion of God's Word. One of the disciples speaks up and says to no one in particular, I want to be able to pray like that. About 15 minutes later, Jesus finishes his prayer and begins walking your way. Everyone walks toward him as well. He's about five paces from you when one of the disciples speaks up. Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus smiles and motions for everyone to sit on the ground. Please, gather around, he says. You find a dry, grassy spot with no dirt. The other disciples do too. Jesus sits in the middle as everyone forms a circle. James is sitting to your left, John to your right. The breeze across the field is still refreshing, and the sun overhead is just as warm on your skin as it was earlier. It's a perfect spring day to learn from the Lord. Jesus begins speaking. When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus is still teaching everyone about prayer, and you're still mulling over everything he said. His model prayer was perfect. It was God-centered. It was full of humility. It was a prayer unlike you've ever heard by a rabbi. You've noticed that Jesus looks each disciple in the eyes while he's talking. He's looked at you several times, too. It's almost as if he's looking into your soul, as if he already knows everything you need without asking. Jesus smiles at you as he continues. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, A friend of mine has just arrived for a visit, and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, Don't bother me. The door is locked for the night, and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, 
He will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. And so I tell you, keep on asking and you'll receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. You fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Two hours have passed. Everyone is walking again along a dirt path through the Judean countryside led by Jesus, who is in the front. The sun is slowly approaching the western horizon. Before long, it will be time to stop and rest for the night. You're enjoying the sights in the sky. A full moon is rising in the eastern sky. It looks bigger than any moon you've ever seen, as if it has saved its best show for the Son of God. To the west, a large gray cloud has covered the sun, sending yellow rays racing across the blue sky from one horizon to the next. You think back to what the psalmist wrote. The heavens declare the glory of God. High overhead, a white-tailed eagle is flying in circles, eyeing the landscape and hunting for its next meal. You spot a hyrax about 20 paces away to your right, hiding under a large boulder. The eagle doesn't see him. The hyrax, for now, is safe. But your mind keeps returning to Jesus' words about prayer. They were full of wisdom. They were full of power. They brought you an unexplainable sense of peace. Jesus taught you how to pray. To the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he told you that the God who created the sun and the moon loves you like a loving father loves his child. He told you to be persistent in your prayer. He even promised he would give you the Holy Spirit. You were called Jesus words our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, don't bother me. The door is locked for the night. And my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. And so I tell you, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, 
and to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. You fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Now, as we transition back to the current day, let's focus on the words of Christ. I will read the Lord's Prayer several times. In a few moments, I also will stop and pray for you after each segment in the prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Dear Father, you are holy, you are righteous, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the creator and sustainer of all life. Thank you for creating us and loving us. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, the nations tremble before you. Father, we only want what you want. Conform us to your will. Teach us to be holy. Teach us to be righteous. Teach us to be more like you. Teach us to love the things of God and not the things of men. Father, we want to advance your kingdom and to live for you. May your will be done in our lives. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Father, we ask that you will give us what we need this week. I pray that this child of God will have peace and patience and sweet dreams all night as you protect them. I also ask that you will grant them great health. I ask that you will provide for their every need. We ask that you will forgive us our sins. Teach us to forgive like you forgive and to love like you love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Father, I ask that you will protect this child of God from temptation. 
I ask that you will guard them with your mighty power and your army of angels. Your word says, In peace I will both lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Give them a wonderful night's rest. Father God, you are the creator and the sustainer. You are worthy of worship. Thank you for loving us and protecting us. It's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. Dear one, the Lord of heaven and earth is protecting you. He's watching over you. He wants to know you more. You have peace because you serve the God of peace. You can feel his presence right now because his Holy Spirit dwells within you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this child of God. Thank you for their heart for you. Thank you for this time to relax. Thank you for the gift of sleep. Father, I ask that you will grant them peace and patience. I ask that you will bless them with a wonderful night's sleep. I pray that they will wake up refreshed, ready to serve you. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is protecting you. He's the God of Simon Peter and the Apostle Paul. He loves you, and he's watching over you. Rest in his peace. Abide in his presence. You are loved. Do you ever feel as if you have to hide who you really are in order to be accepted? Like, have you had to put on a happy face and pretend that everything in your life is just perfect in order to feel worthy of love? Perhaps you're afraid that if others knew of the pain and the struggles that you have, they'd be scared off. I heard someone say once that all of us have struggles and pain, but some of us are just better at pretending than others. <laughs> True, huh? If only we'd be honest with each other. Well, we can be assured that God is not afraid of our questions, our longings, or our pain. In fact, the psalmist tells us, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. God not only welcomes the real you, but he actually is drawn to you when you're hurting, struggling, or feeling weak. If you're devoting your energy to maintaining that mask of happiness, you're actually cutting yourself off from connection with God and with others. Your pride may be sabotaging your authenticity. When others see you being open and transparent about your struggles, it opens a door that gives them sort of a permission to be real too. And when you're honest with God and yourself, willing to admit your weakness, your broken heart and your need for rescue, well, that's when you'll know that God is close to the brokenhearted and he is able to save you. Comfort is right around the corner. God is near to those whose spirits are crushed. God is near to you. Prepare to come before God honest about your own wounds. We all have something that brings us to our knees for sure. And as we practice paying attention to God's presence, please feel free to pause the app as often as you need to, asking the Holy Spirit to prepare your mind and your body for what God is going to do in you today. But before we begin, let me lead us in a moment of prayer. Dear God, sometimes I don't want to admit the pain I feel. I know I'm broken and need of rescue, but I keep trying to save myself, and I pretend that I'm sufficient on my own. 
God, would you help me to practice vulnerability and honesty, opening up to you and to the people that you've put in my life? Thank you for your promise to be near to the brokenhearted and to rescue those whose spirits are crushed. Be near to me. In Jesus' name, amen. When we admit our brokenness and need, God is right there with us. Today, I really hope in this time of longer, deep meditation, it'll help you fix your thoughts on the God who comforts the afflicted. Move into a posture that helps you reflect on your need and God's provision. Pause and hold your hands open, palms up. God fills what is empty. You're ready to receive God's provision. Now take a few deep and cleansing breaths. Breathe out your sadness and breathe in God's presence. Breathe out your distractions and breathe in God's presence. Consider your life for a moment. Is there anything you need to confess to God before we go on? Ask God to reveal any sins lurking in your heart. Then confess them to him and thank him for his love and forgiveness. Because of Christ, you can come before God clean and forgiven. We must be able to admit our need in order to receive God's gift of grace. Admit to God your need for Him. He delights to bring comfort and hope to you. We bring glory to God by admitting our need and accepting His gift of grace. Listen carefully to every detail as I read from Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. What stood out to you from that passage? Listen again carefully. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Reflect here on how God might be using this passage today to touch your life. God is near to you in your sadness. Pause and ponder here for a moment. Are you willing to admit your need for God? When you're in distress, where do you turn for help? What might it look like to turn to God with your sadness? Listen carefully for more as I read from Psalm 34, verse 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. What'd you hear this time? Why don't you focus in on that, allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you in a time of deeper meditation. It is exhausting and futile to keep up the pretense that you're just fine. You know, God calls you to be honest about your needs and your pain, your brokenness and your sin, and the effects of the world's brokenness on your life. You might prefer to be self-sufficient. Well, pause here to reflect on your need for God. 
consider how honesty might allow you to experience his gracious presence even more deeply. Listen one final time as I read and you meditate on Psalm 34, 18. We're going to back up a little bit, though. I want to take a broader look. We're going to begin with verse 15. The eyes of God watch over those who do right. His ears are open to their cries for help. But God turns his face against those who do evil. He will erase their memory from the earth. God hears his people when they call to him for help, and he rescues them from all of their troubles. God is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Because of Christ, you are included in the household of God. What a thought. Because of Christ, God does not turn his face against you when you do evil, but he hears when you call for help. As a mother whose heart is stirred as she runs toward her child when she hears him crying out, imagine God hearing your cries and turning his face towards you. And now imagine the look on God's face. What do you see? He's ready to help you, to comfort you, and restore you. How does God reveal his love as he turns toward you? How do you feel? Imagine God's comfort wrapping around you like a warm blanket on a cold night, or filling your empty stomach like a nourishing meal, removing the ache from your bones like a long hot shower. As God's comfort begins to restore you, what is he calling you to do? How might the love and forgiveness you've been shown spill over in your life today, changing the way you live and relate to those around you? Join me in prayer. God, thank you for accepting me just as I am, broken, brokenhearted, and in need of your grace and forgiveness. I know I can't save myself. I know I need to be saved. I need to be changed, God. But you accept me as I am. You don't leave me that way, though. You transform my life with your goodness. As I bask in your comfort today, God, would you help me also to share your grace and love with those around me? Thank you for your promise to be near to the brokenhearted and to rescue those whose spirits are crushed. Would you be near to me, God, and change me today? In Jesus' name, amen. There's no way to predict what you're going to face in the hours ahead today. But whatever happens, God will be near to you. Today, why don't you consider how you can show others the same kind of love and forgiveness that you've been shown. But before you go, stay here prayerfully attentive to God's presence for as long as you need to. Meditate on his goodness and love. No rush, no timer, no clock. 
Just listen and be present, or journal if God places something on your heart. Allow the Holy Spirit to hold you in this place for several more minutes of profound comfort with God as you meditate and abide in Christ. Tonight, we're going to meditate on the very best news of all, the gospel, the good news that Jesus has saved you from sin and death. You can rest secure for all eternity because of what Jesus has done for you. And there is no better way to find peace than in the gospel. There is no better way to fall asleep than resting easy in God's promises. In a few minutes, I'm going to read to you from the letter that Paul wrote to the church in Galatia. Some Christians there were confused about the gospel. They thought they had to earn God's love. Paul's goal in this letter is to make it abundantly clear that God's love and salvation are gifts of grace, not things that can be earned. But before I read from Galatians, take a moment to get comfortable. Let your mind and body and soul rest. Adjust your pillow. Turn out the lights. And make sure your blankets are just right. Know that God is with you. Know that Jesus has already accomplished your salvation and the victory belongs to him. Know that the Holy Spirit is ready to comfort you and to pray on your behalf as you sleep. With your mind at ease, let's focus on your breath. Breathe in God's peace and breathe out the worries of the day. Practice exhaling a bit longer than you inhale. Inhale for a count of four, and then exhale for six. Breathe in, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Again. Breathe in, two, three, four and exhale two three four five six Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are all that is good, and all good gifts come from you. Thank you for sending your Son Jesus to take on human flesh, to live and die as one of us, and to conquer death by rising again. Thank you for inviting us into this resurrection life. Thank you for your grace in bringing us into your family you've given us gifts we could never earn or deserve we are so grateful God as this child sleeps tonight 
may your spirit minister to them may they experience deep rest and true renewal may they find their security in the promise that you are with them and that nothing can separate them from your love it's in the name of Jesus we pray amen relax and let your breathing stay slow and steady as I read parts of Galatians 2 and 3 in the New Living Translation when I tried to keep the law it condemned me so I died to the law I stopped trying to meet all its requirements so that I might live for God my old self has been crucified with Christ it is no longer I who live but Christ lives in me so I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless for if keeping the law could make us right with God then there was no need for Christ to die I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God tell Jesus that you live in trust Jesus I live in this earthly body by trusting in you Paul writes for you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus and all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes there is no longer Jew or Gentile slave or free male and female for you are all one in Christ Jesus and now that you belong to Christ you are the true children of Abraham you are his heirs and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you you are a child of God and God's promises are for you let me pray for you God we praise you for the redemption you've brought through Jesus we praise you for your generosity and grace and love thank you for bringing us into the family together and making us one in Christ bring peace and unity to your people God in the next chapter Paul writes but when the right time came God sent his son born of a woman subject to the law God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children and because we are his children God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts prompting us to call out Abba father now you are no longer a slave but God's own child and since you are his child God has made you his heir the Holy Spirit lives in you you can call God father because Jesus has set you free and brought you into the family and while every human family you've known has been imperfect and may have hurt you God's love is perfect picture yourself coming home to this parent the joy in their eyes when they see you the solid hug the readiness to listen the food on the table waiting for you clean laundry new clothes see yourself totally at rest 
enjoying the presence of a parent who loves you perfectly who doesn't demand anything from you who doesn't accuse who isn't too busy a parent you can never disappoint a parent whose love will never fail let yourself relax into this perfect love you are completely safe here held secure by a parent who sings over you with joy and who will never leave listen to God singing to you now enter more deeply into this love let me read those words again this time in the new revised translation for through the law I died to the law so that I might live to God I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live but it is Christ who lives in me and the life I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me I do not nullify the grace of God for if justification comes through the law then Christ died for nothing as many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ there is no longer Jew or Greek there is no longer slave or free there is no longer male and female for all of you are one in Christ Jesus and if you belong to Christ then you are Abraham's offspring heirs according to the promise when the fullness of time had come God sent his son born of a woman born under the law in order to redeem deem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children and because you are children God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts crying Abba father so you are no longer a slave but a child and if a child then also an heir through God God you are the giver of grace the giver of all good things help your child now to fix their thoughts on you to trust you and to rest in the truth that through Jesus they have been saved let these words guide your breath breathing in Abba breathing out father inhaling Abba and exhaling father
holy spirit dwell richly in this child tonight abide in them as they abide in you may this child sleep in your peace tonight and rise up in the morning ready to seek you again sink deeply into sleep as I read the truth from Galatians one final time it is no longer I who live but Christ lives in me so I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me the gospel teaches us that salvation is a gift through faith in Jesus who loved us and gave himself for us rest tonight in the assurance that you belong to God gracious and powerful God thank you for sending your son Jesus to be our Savior thank you for his perfect life and sinless death thank you for his victory over the grave thank you that he has brought us into your family God I ask now that you would be with your child as they sleep through this night give them peaceful dreams restore their spirit and wake them in the morning to a new day that you have made that they may rejoice and be glad in it that they may experience your fresh mercies that they may work to help usher in your kingdom on earth in the name of the Father Son and Holy Spirit amen As we end the season of gift giving look to the new year prepare your heart to rest in Jesus's gift of peace his peace reconciled us to God as no other act could do when our faith is in Jesus his gift makes us righteous and able to come into God's presence what an amazing gift to pay the cost a relationship with God now before we begin I want you to get into a comfortable place take care of any physical distractions like noise or light find a temperature and a place to lie down that is most comfortable for you you might take this moment to choose some music on abide that is peaceful for you or you may choose to simply listen in silence when you're ready close your eyes and relax allow your breathing to slow down gently place your head on your pillow in John 14 verse 27 Jesus said peace I leave with you my peace I give to you not as the world gives do I give to you let not your hearts be troubled neither let them be afraid may you feel that same peace during this time of rest pray with me Jesus thank you for leaving peace that passes all understanding for me peace in knowing that I am in you peace in knowing where I am going that I have eternal life that you have conquered this world and that I am chosen and loved that the struggles of this world are dim in comparison to your glory and ultimately knowing that I have peace 
with God. Be with me now in the quiet and stillness with the thoughts of the peace Jesus brings. Thank you, Jesus, for this gift that was yours to freely give. Thank you for not making me earn it, because I never could. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, with that, separate yourself right now from the day-to-day hustle, the concerns of the day, and visualize your true self as seen by Jesus the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Did you know that there is a table at God's place of grace with your name on it? And you are invited to come and dine with the one who loved you so much that he provided a place where you could come and receive a new beginning for free as you draw closer to a deep sleep come just as you are you will be kindly received there just as this story describes I shook my head in disbelief this couldn't be the right place After all, I couldn't possibly be welcome here. I had been given an invitation several times by several different people, and I had finally decided to see what this place was all about. But this just couldn't be the place. Quickly, I glanced down at the invitation that I clutched in my hand. I scanned past the words, Come as you are no jacket required and found the location yes I was at the right place I peered through the window again and saw a room of people whose faces seemed to glow with joy all were neatly dressed adorned in fine garments and appeared strangely clean as they dined at this exquisite restaurant ashamed I looked down at my own tattered and torn clothing covered in stains I was dirty in fact filthy a foul smell seemed to consume me and I couldn't shake the grime that clung to my body as I turned around to leave the words from the invitation seemed to leap out at me come as you are no jacket required I decided to give it a shot mustering up every bit of courage I could find I opened the door to this restaurant and walked up to a man standing behind a podium your name sir he asked me with a smile Jimmy D Brown I mumbled without looking up I thrust my hands deep into my pockets, hoping to conceal their stains. He didn't seem to notice the filth that I was covered in, and he continued, Very good, sir. A table is reserved in your name. Would you like to be seated? I couldn't believe what I heard. A grin broke out on my face, and I said, Yes, of course. He led me to a table, and sure enough, There was a place card with my name written on it in a deep, dark red. As I browsed over the menu, I saw many delightful items listed. There were things like peace, joy, blessings, confidence, assurance, hope, love, faith, and mercy. I realized that this was no ordinary restaurant. I flipped the menu back to the front in order to see where I was. God's grace was the name of this place. The man returned and said, 
I recommend the special of the day. With it, you are entitled to heaping portions of everything on this menu. You've got to be kidding, I thought to myself. You mean I can have all of this? What is the special of the day? I asked with excitement ringing in my voice. Salvation, was his reply. I'll take it. I practically cried out, and as quickly as I made that statement, the joy left my body. A sick, painful ache jerked through my stomach and tears filled my eyes. Between my sobs, I said, Mister, just look at me. I'm dirty and I'm nasty. I am unclean and unworthy of such things. I'd love to have all of this, but but I just can't afford it. Undaunted, the man smiled again. Sir, your check has already been taken care of by that gentleman over there, he said as he pointed to the front of the room. His name is Jesus. Turning, I saw a man whose very presence seemed to light the room. He was almost too much to look at. I found myself walking towards him, and in a shaking voice I whispered, Sir, wash the dishes, or sweep the floors, or take out the trash. I'll do anything I can do to repay you for all of this. He opened his arms and said with a smile, All of this is yours. If you just come unto me, ask me to clean you up, and I will. Ask me to allow you to feast at my table, and you will eat. Remember, the table is reserved in your name. All you must do is accept this gift that I offer you. Astonished, I fell at his feet and said, Please, Jesus, please clean up my life. Please change me and sit me at your table and give me this new life. Immediately, I heard the words, It is finished. I looked down, and white robes adorned my body. Something strange and wonderful had happened. I felt new, like a weight had been lifted, and I found myself seated at his table. The special of the day has been served, the Lord said to me. Salvation is yours. We sat and talked for a great while. I so enjoyed the time that I spent with him. He told me, me, of all people, that he would like for me to come back as often as I liked for another helping from God's grace. He made it clear that he wanted me to spend as much time with him as possible. As it drew near time for me to go back outside into the real world, he whispered to me softly, And lo, I am with you always. And then he said something to me that I will never forget. He said, My child, do you see these empty tables? Yes, Lord, I see them. What do they mean? These are reserved tables. But the individuals whose names are on each place card have not accepted their invitation yet. Would you be so kind as to hand these out to those who have not joined us yet? Of course, I said with excitement as I picked up the invitations. Go ye therefore into all the nations, 
he said as I turned to leave. I walked into God's grace, dirty and hungry, stained in sin, my righteousness as filthy rags. And Jesus cleaned me up. I walked out a brand new person, robed in white, his righteousness. And so I'll keep my promise to my Lord. I'll go. I'll spread the word. I'll share the gospel. I'll hand out the invitations. And I'll start with you. Dear one, have you been to God's grace? There's a table reserved in your name. And here's your invitation. Come as you are. No jacket required. Continue resting soundly. Resting in the truth that God calls you to come as you are. Our Father in heaven loves to hear from his children. Trusting in his promises, we bring all the fears and distress to him in prayer. So hear this prayer now, as if from Jesus himself. Dear child, I heard you cry last night. I was there in the darkness when the tears slipped down your face and your heart broke within you. Did you think I didn't see and didn't care? Do you really think I don't know how tired and weary you really are? Child, I've been with you when life has dealt its bitterest blows. I've watched you handle all the sorrow and all the pain. But you are weary now, and I can see the broken spirit the faded hopes and dreams. Please do not forget that I care. My touch and caress can restore and mend your broken heart and kindle the flame of hope once more within you. Let me love you. Take down the barricades around your heart and lean on me because I am not tired and I am not weary and I have the strength enough to carry you if you will let me. You are not alone and you never have been for I am your friend and creator and I will never ever leave your side. Trust me. Sleep well, my child. Your friend and savior, Jesus. And Jesus said, Peace. I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Tonight, we're going to trade our anxious thoughts for the hope and comfort of the Holy Spirit. We're going to meditate on all that's good and fall asleep with mind and heart centered on Jesus and the promises of God's word. I can't imagine a better way to enter deeply into rest than by resting secure in the presence of God. 
Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us now, and thank you for the good gift of rest. We are tired and in need of your renewal. Be present with us as we sleep and protect us through the hours of the night so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, before we read from God's Word, let's make sure you're comfortable. Adjust the lights or the blankets if you need to. And let's take just a few minutes for progressive muscle relaxation to get your body ready to sleep. We're going to tense muscle groups one at a time, holding the tension for about five seconds, then exhaling and letting that muscle group fully relax for 10 to 20 seconds before you move on to the next muscle group. Research has shown that this technique offers a range of benefits, including pain relief and better sleep. It may also reduce migraines and systolic blood pressure. So, begin by lifting your toes upward, tensing your muscles, hold. Then let go. Now, pull your toes downward. Hold. Then let go. Good. Next, tense your calf muscles. Hold. Then let go. Move your knees toward each other. Hold. Then let go. Squeeze your thigh muscles. Hold. Then let go. Clench your hands. Pause. Now let go. Tense your arms. Hold. Now let go. Squeeze your buttocks. Hold. Then let go. Contract your abdominal muscles. Hold. Now let go. Inhale and tighten your chest. Hold. Now exhale and let go. Thank you. 
raise your shoulders to your ears. Hold. Now let go. Purse your lips together. Hold. Then let go. Open your mouth wide. Hold. Then let go. Close your eyes tightly. Hold. Now release. Good. Let your whole body relax, warm and loose as you rest in safety. And pray with the psalmist, God, when my anxious thoughts multiply within me, your comforts delight me. What comforts has God given you? Or in another translation, Lord, when doubts fill my mind, when my heart is in turmoil, quiet me and give me renewed hope and cheer. Heavenly Father, all good gifts come from you. All hope and all cheer, all comforts and consolations. Thank you for sending your Son, Jesus. Thank you for sending your Spirit to abide with your precious child. Help them tonight to abide in you, to trade their worries and sorrows for your peace and your joy. May your spirit minister to them as they sleep. Give them the gifts of deep rest and true renewal. It's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Let your breathing stay slow and steady as I read parts of Philippians 4, where Paul writes, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such things. God, we want to think on the things that you have called lovely and good. Whatsoever is true, Jesus says, I am the truth. The truth shines like light that the darkness cannot overcome like the sun, brilliant on a summer's day at the coast. The sun sparkles on the water and warms your skin. If you clamber up from the soft white beaches to the rocky cliffs, you can see the sun lighting the landscape for miles and miles. The truth shines like the sun, 
and the truth burns like a fire that will never go out. Like a beach campfire that keeps you warm as you rest next to it, gazing at the multitude of stars overhead. The air is only slightly chilly, and the fire is just right. This fire burns away all falsehoods and warms you with its truth. Whatsoever is noble. What if there was a king and queen who never abused their power? Can you imagine monarchs who aren't noble because they were born to the right parents or owned the right land, but whose character was all goodness and kindness? These monarchs would not wear costly royal robes while their subjects starved. They would cast off the trappings of nobility and exchange them for true nobility of character, sharing their riches so that all in the kingdom could flourish together. Their lands would be fruitful with crops. Their people live in peace and freedom. Whatsoever is right. Imagine after hours of being turned around, making wrong turns and getting stuck in gridlock traffic, finding yourself on the right road. There's not a doubt in anyone's mind. This is the way. And the road is open before you. Green fields on either side. The shadows of mountains in the distance. You're not in a rush. This is the way. You'll get there when the time is right. So for now, you roll down the windows, turn up the music, and sing along. The air smells like fresh cut grass and honeysuckle, and the radio is playing songs you all know the words to. A person you love is in the front seat next to you. This is the place God has appointed for you and it feels right in every way. Whatsoever is pure. Pure, like the first snowfall of the season. Thick flakes drifting softly from the sky, making the world soft and quiet. The air smells clean and cold, and as the hours pass, the whole world turns white. Outside your window, you see neighbors bringing their toddler out to play. She's bundled up, all roly-poly and puffy snow clothes, hats and mittens and boots. It's her first snow. Is this a sandcastle? She asks her mom, who smiles. She touches it, tastes it, lies down next to her mom, as they wave arms and legs, making angels in the snow. The purity of the landscape, the purity of delight. In Jesus, you are made pure like that, washed white as snow. God's delight in you is as pure as that. Whatever is lovely. Have you ever seen a couple married for decades and decades still in love? Picture them pushing 90. They don't move quickly. Their faces are lined, their skin droops, their shoulders round forward, their hair, what's left of it, white and thin. But when they look at each other, they see all those things, but they don't really see them because they know each other inside and out. They see who they were at 20 and at 35 and at 60. They see each other, not just their bodies, but their souls. They love not just because they're lovely, 
but because the long practice of loving each other has made them lovely. Holding on to each other, they head out for their daily walk around the lake where they practice beholding all the lovely things that God has made. The loon calling out, the silvery flash of fish under the water, the soft, dark soil of the path, the tall trees that existed before they did and will continue to shade this path when they're gone. Whatever is admirable, excellent, praiseworthy, think on these things. Let the Spirit bring to mind those things in your life that are praiseworthy. The people, the gifts of food, shelter, companionship, the things that are truly excellent gifts of a loving Father. God, all good and perfect gifts come from you. I pray with the psalmist. When I thought my foot is slipping, your steadfast love, O oh Lord, held me up. When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul. Help me to fix my thoughts on you, to trust you, and to rest in the truth that through Jesus I have been saved. Sink deeply into sleep as I read the truth from Philippians one final time. Fix your thoughts on what is true and good and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and dwell on the fine good things in others. Think about all you can praise God for and be glad about. Holy Spirit, dwell richly in this child tonight. Abide in them as they abide in you. May this child sleep in your peace tonight and rise up in the morning ready to seek you again. I feel like when I listen to the sleep meditations that I have a friend next to me.